Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Tuesday, April 18th, 2017 edition of VR News. I made an announcement as a separate video. I want to keep the VR News, even though I, you know, I will add personal anecdotal stuff from time to time and the odd thing in the intro. I want to keep it pure to the news. If you're interested in some of the things that are going to happen uh, just to me and indirectly and directly to the channel, go watch that video. Let us jump into the news, guys. I'm going to start with Google Earth. I mentioned the other day that there's going to be an update today to Google Earth VR. Well, that update came today. We now know the details. Full official Oculus Rift and touch support. No more workarounds, no more, you know, beating it to your will and submission. It is now officially supported with this latest update. Google had a statement which reads as follows. Google Earth VR gives you the opportunity to easily explore the world and discover new places. We made sure that navigating the planet in Earth VR on Rift with touch feels natural, comfortable, and immersive so that even more people can fly over cities and stand over mountains in VR. We thought a lot about the button mapping to make sure it was intuitive and took advantage of the touch controller's precise analog sticks, which are a great fit for the way you move around in Earth VR. And I really like that. It shows they didn't just do a port job, they actually took advantage of features that the touch controllers have the Vive wands don't, namely the analog sticks. So very good of them to do that. Um, honestly would have expected them to just basically port the functionality over. Nice to see that they haven't done that. There's also a new search feature. It's going to allow users just to type in an address and visit the location, kind of like you can with Google Maps, uh, using the Android Assistant, or if you're on the iPhone with Siri, etc. So very cool. They've also added 27 new locations, uh, castles, table mountains in South Africa, just all kinds of very cool locations. Those are those special locations where they add all kinds of satellite and street level detail that you normally would not get. So absolutely fantastic. Available for free on Steam. And like I said, for the first time ever, Oculus Home. Very cool. Next up, time travel to 1628 with the VR time scope in Paris. What a cool idea. So time scope, which is a French startup company, got this idea that they would find tourist hotspots. Imagine if this was Rome, Hell, we can even use the Paris example. You've got the Eiffel Tower, right? Well, if it was Rome, maybe the Colosseum, Trevi Fountain, etc. What you or what they are offering is almost like a VR kiosk. You pay some money, a couple of euros, you put the HMD on, and you are able to experience that historical location within the time period when it was at its peak, right? So maybe if it's the Eiffel Tower, it's it being built, or, you know, the famous Nazi occupation, liberation, etc. So bring in all of that amazing history, Bastille, for example, to tourists that can experience that in 360 degrees is just such an amazingly awesome idea. And when you read it, and when you say it, it sounds so obvious. We should have done that all along, and yet it takes a company to actually do it to make you think, yeah, that makes sense. So very cool. I would love to see that spread uh, to North America, Asia. That would just add so much to tourism, right? It's one thing, and, and it doesn't take away from that gifted tour guide that you know, and we had an amazing one when we visited Turkey and we were in the Blue Mosque or Hagia Sophie. And when, you know, you got a good tour guide, they can take you back for a time travel trip, right? Alas, they aren't all that good. <laughs> Some are absolutely terrible and in it literally just for a few bucks. It's 
as an alternative to that that I think this is really going to benefit. Very, very cool. So for this one, like the one that allows you to see the, the revolution uh, in France, it's two euros to be able to take it. And it's uh, about a five to ten minute experience. Very cool. Right now, they've got uh, just a few, uh, three in total. They hope to open up more in the future. Next news piece, HTC is offering various different bundles for the Vive, including one, the Vive bundled with a GTX 1070 GPU for $999. So the uh, bundle includes the GeForce GTX 1070 Founders Edition, so that's the FE Edition, for $999. If you bought both individually, it would cost you $1,250. So you're saving $250. I think that's a really cool and creative way to sell the Vive because you're not having to have a person make a choice you know, for inferior hardware. Maybe they have a graphic card that just doesn't cut mustard, right? And they're buying the Vive for that and then end up being disappointed because the performance isn't what they would have expected it to be. This ensures that they're going to get at least a decent level of performance. I guess unless you have a really crappy, you know, old CPU, if you've got something somewhat, you know, within the last three years, four years, you should be fine pairing that with a 1070. They've also got uh, another official bundle, which is a VR-ready laptop, MSI's GS73 VR. And that comes with the GTX 1060 mobile card. And remember, that's the card that's within 15% of the speed and performance of its desktop uh, brother. So it's basically almost as fast a really good viable option, 16 gigs of RAM on that laptop, paired with a Vive for 2,498 US dollars, and that breaks down to 125 per month over two years if you finance it. So some pretty good savings there. Finally, they've got a bundle with a desktop PC, CyberPower GX i970 with a Vive, which can also be financed for $99 a month and that's for a set period of time, boasting a GTX 1070 as well, and eight gigabytes of RAM. And then they've got their normal financing options that we talked about a few months ago. So nice to see them come out with different options. I always worry a little bit about financing because the problem with financing is if you don't have the money to do the purchase outright, you probably don't have the money to do it in installments either. Yeah, it just creates the illusion that you do. And if you're not really disciplined and really good with money, you could run into trouble. But still, there are options. Next story, uh, the F8 Facebook event. Uh, it's now in full swing. And the beta version of Spaces from Facebook was launched today. And of course, that is the uh, social VR program. They had a demo of it at Oculus Connect 3. Still looks very much like that. They have added uh, and made enhancements to like the avatar system, etc. So any of you out there that happen to be beta testing this, love to hear from you. It's going to get a lot better for me with the comments, uh, you know, now that things at uh, work are at ahead. So I will be back to reading and responding to those. Next up, also Facebook related, they have launched React VR, which is an extension to the React system that was already out. So it's a new JavaScript framework for building basic VR apps. Uh, you'll be able to do your own 360 degree experience apps, for example. And it uses the existing web technologies like WebGL and WebVR to power and it's also worth noting, according to the article, that uh, with these tools, you might not be able to do the most complex games experiences, but you can do some pretty decent stuff. So you can add 3D models, but the main idea is to allow people to assemble 360 degree content and make the navigation of that fairly straightforward and streamlined. Next news story and last, Lenovo's 
mixed reality, virtual reality headset likely to launch mid-August or slightly earlier, possibly even in July. This is, of course, one of the Windows 10 headsets. And uh, I think this one looks pretty decent. I don't think it's, you know, the most stylish thing. I wouldn't call it ugly, but uh, probably not the best of the lookers of the bunch. I kind of like the Acer unit personally. I thought that looked pretty good. It's going to sport the dual 1440 by 1440 OLED. Love OLED. Nice, vibrant colors there. Last week, of course, Microsoft shipped their Windows 10 Creators update. So the software is in place. Really, the hardware's uh, devs, they can release their hardware at any time. The software is there to support it. It's nice to see Lenovo first out of the gates. Can't wait till it's out there and we start getting some feedback and reviews on it. Find out what it's like. All right, guys, that is it for the news for this Tuesday. As always, cheers, guys.